So, have you been clicking on random Discord files lately? Your funeral. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and today we'll be talking about Discord ransomware. Very specifically, we've got a variant on the desktop right now that we'll be taking a look at. But I also want to use this opportunity to talk about Discord in general, and I think we are seeing the emergence of Slack and Discord as primary threat vectors, since essentially they're like the new email. And I would predict that over time these are going to be more damaging than email because on an email you still have to read something, you have to click on the attachment, you have to download it, you have to run the file or open Excel. With Discord and Slack you can often just click on something and it will run. Now as someone who does have a Discord server, hint, join the TPSC Discord, link in the description. I do see a lot of malicious activity on here, and even in our threat feeds I've noticed the emergence of links that link to some Discord server or a Slack channel. At first in a threat feed you'd only see a couple of links like that, these days it's a lot more. So attackers are adopting these platforms. Now on Discord, you can report such links to the trust and safety team, but again, response times are not great. And as of the time of making this video, it's still relatively easy to just directly upload malware to Discord. There's no automated scanning that takes care of stuff like that, like Google Drive, for example. So I do see this as an interesting threat factor. Now the sample we're going to take a look at today is called Discord Nitro. Now this is the other side of the spectrum when it comes to ransomware. I'm pretty sure there's no major financial targeting with this. Essentially the ransomware, you'll see what it does. But it does have several references to Discord, as you can see. Um, there's a webhook here. It's not very secretive. Again, you can actually see the entire debug path, probably developed on Visual Studio. I like how the username is GG. And as of now, it is detected on Vars Total, 51 out of 70. It looks like it's some variant of hidden tier at the end of the day, probably reusing the open source ransomware code. But we're going to go ahead and run it. But before that, to turn up the stakes, we're going to take a look at our documents. So as you can see, we've got all the plays of Shakespeare in here. And let's imagine this is the final copy that exists on the planet. Everything else got destroyed in a fire, and this is the last copy of Shakespeare we have. Well, let's see what happens when we go ahead and run this ransomware. As you can see, it acts pretty quickly. A couple of files on the desktop, and I can already see stuff disappearing in this folder. If we scroll down, give me Nitro. So the funny thing about this ransomware is it doesn't ask for payment in Bitcoin. It actually asks you to give the person Nitro who made it. So I guess it's a bit of a joke, but hey, if this is the last copy of Shakespeare, not so much of a joke, but I don't know what Shakespeare would feel about this kind of satirical work, but bottom line, it is encrypting our data. I can see the CPU ramping up if we go ahead and open Task Manager, as you will see. It's just nitro.exe taking up a ton of CPU, and I think it's close to being done at this point. It changes the desktop wallpaper to this evil-looking Discord icon, and yeah, now we have the ransom note. Oh no, your files are encrypted. You have three hours to give us Discord Nitro. If you fail to do so, your files will be lost forever. Uh, missing a space there. Discord Nitro Griff subscription and paste the link in the test box. Oh my god. So it is basically a bit of a joke. Now I wonder if people actually fell for this and ended up getting the Nitro subscription. Hey, at least it's not super expensive, right? It's not like they're asking $50 million or $70 million like the other ransomware last week. But I guess part of my goal here is to raise awareness about the use of platforms like Discord. Not to say that there's anything specific that this particular ransomware does, but I have seen exploits on Discord that will allow the attackers to hack into your account. That was a major story a couple of weeks ago. I have seen scripts where there's a meme or an image on Discord and you click on it and it's just going to take over your screen or crash your computer and it's still relatively easy to do these things to where people are using it as a joke. It almost seems like some people use things like ransomware as an art form. I don't know how I feel about that, and I can totally see disaster waiting to happen if something like this gets taken up by one of these bot raids and just spammed across Discord, and then we have a thousand people who are infected with this. But thankfully, at the present moment, 
this is not in massive circulation based on the analytics on Vars Total and other such sites. What I found is that still fairly limited in terms of distribution, but it's worth noting that there is a lot of malware development and distribution on platforms like Slack and Discord, so watch out. If you see a random file, don't just click on it unless you know the person or trust the source. Don't click on any links on Discord, even images for that matter, especially if it's a GIF. There's a lot of obfuscation, encryption, stenography when it comes to hiding malicious code in, in a lot of different types of data. And you never know what version of application, what exploit is going to run on your computer. And at this point, we have so much software that we use that it's really hard to predict or know what vulnerability might be in what software that's going to suddenly allow some code to run. So it's always good to be careful. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the sample in Varstotal Intelligence. As you can see, it does match a lot of the crowdsourced Sigma rules for similar threats. Now we're going to take a look at the graphs so we can maybe see some of the file relations. So this one seems connected to a lot of IPs in the United States. No connections to Russia, interestingly. That's quite common with ransomware, but that's how we know this is not one of those threat groups. I mean, it's hidden tier, so that's kind of expected. It does have embedded domain, that's Discord. Interestingly, something to Texas is malicious. <laughs> Uh, false positives these days. But yeah, as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of fairly nefarious connections. It's still worth noticing that it is this easy to capture and distribute a lot of malware. So even as a home user, definitely worth making sure your data is backed up and backed up properly in a detached format. And also that it's up to date. Like some people back up once a year and then it's like, <laughs> If they get ransomware in November, they don't have any data for the last 11 months. Like that's not great. So it's definitely worth automating it, making sure you have backups that are actually up to date and usable if something like this does happen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. There's a lot of interesting stuff coming up, including uh, roundups of some of the most popular free AVs. So make sure you're subscribed to the PC Security channel. We'll be doing some interesting tasks. A big thank you to Unstoppable Domains for sponsoring this video. If you want a domain for your website, there's a whole new way to do it. You can get a crypto domain starting at $20 that you never have to renew. Yes, that's right. You pay once and you own the domain forever. They recently added a ton of new domain options. If you want to get a crypto domain, check it out right now. Link in the description. It's a great option if you want to set up a personal website or portfolio, but don't have a large budget, especially if you're a student. And now you can navigate to these natively on Opera or Brave. So these are becoming a lot more mainstream. Once again, if you're interested, please use the link in the description and show them some love for sponsoring the PC Security channel. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.